everybody, it's Tuesday, so that means it's time to play some word games with me. Uh, but just give me one second, I'm going to go and grab my rabbit now. This is a different rabbit. You'll see. Hey, Snowy. Come here. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So this is one of my other bunnies. This is Snowy. She's a good girl. Very loving. She's kind of like... Pepper and they have the same kind of like aptitude, uh, but you know, she is a lop and a lop is a rabbit whose ears are down and there's several kinds of lops. One is a Holland lop, which is little and she is a mini lop and these got to be five to six pounds and the Holland lops are about three to four pounds. And then Pepper, of course, is the little dwarf. Yeah, what's up, Snowy? She loves attention. So since Pepper gets all the attention during these things, I thought I would try her and see how she likes it. All right. Yeah, look, she's so sweet. Okay, so I am going to start off with a word retrieval. So basically, I'm just going to say a sentence, and you guys are going to have to guess what the word is. And I'm going to give you guys clues and all sorts of stuff so to help you know figure it out so that you guys aren't stuck because I don't want it to be too easy and I don't want it to be too hard either. I like to be somewhere. It needs to be challenging enough, right? And I have to work with the whole group. So for people that are early, moderate, and late. So I try to make enough fun for everybody. Okay, this is a red and juicy fruit that is often made into juice or sauce. So, if you are going to be eating pasta or pizza, hey, lopsided, oh, <laughs> lopsided, that's funny. Um, hey, all right, Snowy, she's, yeah, you're, all right, you want to go down? Okay, all right, maybe, here you go. Ooh, maybe pepper is a better idea. Uh, a red and juicy fruit that is often made into juice or sauce. So, think about pizza, guys. Uh, you might have your crust. You might have some cheese, some bacon, whatever you like. And then we have that sauce. And that sauce is made out of what? It starts with a T. It's actually, it is a, yeah, it is a fruit because it has seeds on the inside. It's red and it has like a green leafy top. What am I thinking of? You can also drink it as a juice. Ooh, I've never had it as a juice. But if you have, please let me know how you like it. Uh, let's see. So I'm trying to find a writing utensil so you guys, so I can fill this out and do it with you guys. So a red fruit, it starts with a T. B A. Tomato, yeah. Tomato, who likes tomato sauce? Who likes tomato juice? If you guys like tomato juice, let me know. I want to know what 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 it tastes like to you guys. Is it really um, sweet? Like, do they put sugar in it? Like, how how does it work? I'm curious. I've never had tomato juice. All right. Ooh, this one is good for Easter. An animal whose hair is made into clothing and who needs to be sheared. So, this is not a rabbit. It's another type of animal. Um, there is a type of rabbit where you do make, they make sweaters and they do shear it. They, they cut it and, and weave the fibers and it turns it into a sweater or a cardigan. And it's called an Angora rabbit. These are rabbits that are so fluffy, they need to be trimmed. Their fur needs to be trimmed or it causes problems. And same thing with this animal. So it goes, bah, it's really cute. It's not a goat. So it's the S. They need to be sheared constantly or else their fur grows out or their hair grows the fiber grows too too out and it causes problems with their movement and things like that believe it or not so it goes bah bah it's not a lamb it's something else it's very similar starts with the s all rabbits all rabbits. hey listen my rabbits don't need to be trimmed they they shed and then they grow a new coat in the winter and the fall. So we are thinking of a sheep. Bah, right? Sheep go ba, I think. Yes. Very important to trim their fur. I think it's fur. I don't know if it's fur or hair. Yep, that's wool. Exactly. And wool is really nice and warm. So in the winter, wool socks, 
a wool coat. It's very, very, very nice and cozy. Oh, hmm. Something green, my favorite activity. Something green that grows outside and needs to be mowed. Because I love mowing the lawn. I'm kidding. I'm sarcastic. Uh, something green that grows outside and needs to be mowed regularly. It grows a lot in the spring and the summer. Not so much in the fall and the winter where it's dying. And I could show it to you guys outside right now. I'll show you outside this window right here. And you guys can tell me what, what do I have that's dead on my lawn right now, guys. Animals eat it, I think, if they were out in a pasture or something, right? They would help rabbits and goats and stuff would be the lawnmowers because they're going to be eating what? Tomato cold for... Ah. Cold? Tomato juice is cold? Really? Uh, I am thinking of the grass, right? We have to mow the grass or it grows too high and then it attracts bugs. So it's important. Now, thankfully, the front lawn's not too bad, but the backyard, oof, we have a third of an acre or so. It, it can be a, a big thing, although we got the self-propelling gas mower, so that's good. If we had enough room, I would do a ride on. That would be really fun, but I don't have one. Not yet. Maybe someday. Hmm. Ooh, oh, okay, okay. A place where children play outside during school. Uh, this is something, it might have a swing set, it might have a slide, monkey bars, a jungle gym type of thing. It's usually one area where all the kids gather to play on the equipment. What do we call that? Play is part of it. That's the first part of the word. My son loves these. I haven't really taken him out since the whole pandemic thingy, but he's going to... I know Belmont Lake has a really nice uh, one of these that he likes. Yeah, a place where children play outside during school. So we got to... Okay, but is it is it acidic? Like, because tomatoes are naturally acidic unless you put sugar in them or something. So does tomato juice have sugar? Like, what is it? Is Or is it like a low acidic tomato that they use? A place where children play outside during school is a playground. Okay. Something you wear on your hands to keep you warm when it's cold outside. So if we wear a hat to keep our head warm and we wear socks to keep our feet warm, what do we put on our hands to keep them warm? No, it could be a couple. There's, there might be a couple of words for it. Yeah, you might need a, yep, a playground. Oliver loves the playground. I used to like the playground, too. I used to like the monkey bars, and they would have the other one. It was like a, I had a swing set in my backyard, and it had a trapeze on it, and that was really fun because it had the two, like, rings you could pull yourself up on, and then there was a bar in the middle, and you could just, like, hang on it upside down and swing. It was great. I loved that. I loved it so much. All right. You might wear, yep. You might wear a glove, right, to keep your hands warm, especially today. Today is a really cold day. Although, you know what? It is officially March, and I forgot to say that. So, happy March. Spring is coming. You guys have survived three months of the new year so far. So, good for you. And hopefully, the weather will be warm and nice and no more snow because I'm sick of snow. Okay. An eating utensil that has three or four tines. So you can pick up pieces of food better. Okay. They say that when you eat pizza, there's two ways to eat it. The New York way is to fold it, right? To fold it in half and put it in your mouth. They say if you eat it with this, it's kind of a blasphemous uh, thing. So we're talking about this eating utensil. So let's think of what we might have. To, to cut food, so we got a knife. What else might you use? Not a spoon, but what? what's the other one? Starts with the F. Yeah. Tastes better than sauce, all right. All right, all right, I will try. Thank you. Thank you for the recommendation. Uh, 
Yes, we might use a fork, right? So they say if you eat your pizza, if you cut your pizza up with a knife and fork, that's not the New York way. That's not the proper way. So I don't know, guys. What do you think? Do you guys use a fork? Or do you prefer to fold the slice and then shove it in your mouth like it's the, the most delicious thing ever? Because I love pizza. Okay. An animal that lives at the zoo and has a very long neck. Guys, this is a giant animal. And it starts with a G. It's very tall. It eats leaves off a tree. So it's a feet. I think it's a vegan. You could call it a vegan, right? I think it's a vegan animal because it eats only plants. Um, and it has a very, very, very long neck. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to get into that. That was a good one. That's a good joke. Um, yeah, just not very New York to do. Eat it with a fork. Um, it's a giant animal, a super, super long neck, has spots on it, has two little things on its head. And it's the reason it's the neck is so tall is so that it can reach high up in the trees. I am thinking of the animal. So it's the G. The Bronx Zoo has them. Last time I went, we saw them. Yeah, I am thinking of a giraffe, right? Super, super, super long necks. They're so huge. Even the baby giraffes look. Jeffrey, yes, from Toys R Us. I was going to say that as a clue too. Jeffrey the giraffe from Toys R Us because I am a Toys R Us kid and I always will be. I used to remember Toys R Us was the place to be when you were a kid. It was just glorious going into it, especially uh, Valley Stream because that one had like, it had like an underground parking thing. So as you went like out of the car into the store, you're like, oh man, this is awesome. And it's almost like a cave type thing. And you just go in and boom, all this lovely, lovely things. It was a fun time, but there are, there's no more. They're all gone now. Something you use to spread a paint on the paper. Ooh, so this is an artist tool. Paint is actually part of the answer. What do we do, guys? What do we use to make sure our hair is lovely? Every day we have to what? You might have to, yeah. You might have to brush. So something that you use to spread paint on the paper is a paintbrush. Although, you know what? Now they have things like watercolor pencils, which is really cool. It works like a regular pencil. And then you just wet it a little bit and it turns into like watercolors. It's really cool. So I'm going to have to get me some sun. So I'm going to have to get me some so I can practice with it. So when we reopen, I could do it with you guys. They also make watercolor like pen brushes. It's really interesting. I'm going to have to, you know, experiment. Ew. What you put under your head at night when you sleep. All right, guys. Let's pretend it's sleepy time. It's bedtime, guys. You got your pajamas. You've brushed your teeth. You're ready to go to bed. What do we need to do to make our neck all comfortable so that when we wake up, our head's not like this and our necks don't hurt? We use a what? It starts with a P. Oh, yes, and I just wanted to say, I just got a weighted blanket, and I absolutely love it. So, I think a weighted blanket is almost great for everybody. I feel like I sleep better with it. It's like getting a nice hug. It's so relaxing and comforting. So, if you want to try out a weighted blanket, I suggest you do. Um, I have a 15-pound one, but Oliver, he, my son, he loves it so much, he, I got him a 7-pound one, which is lighter. It's supposed to go by your body weight, but... I am in love with mine. So that might be something that's interesting for you guys to try out if you haven't already. Yep, a pillow. Exactly, Ron. You got it. Good job. Okay. Something that flies in the air while being attached to a string that you hold. All right. Let's picture it. It's a nice, warm, sunny day. You guys want to go out and do something. There's a whole song about it in Mary Poppins. What did she say? Let's go fly a what? So it's with a K. And you hold it like this, and it's got like a spool and a long string. 
and it goes high up in the air and flies around. I think they also have, um, they made like a championships out of this. My pillow. Do you have one? I have a regular, I have a co-op pillow, I think it's called. It's really nice because you can adjust how much fluff you want into it. So it's, it's perfect. But yeah, something that flies in the air while being attached to a string that you hold. It's called a kite. Get a dog. I can't. My son's allergic to. Believe it or not, he's also allergic to the rabbits. So he can't touch them too much. But I can't. It's so many animal allergies in this house, unfortunately. I like dogs, though. I like, like, corgis and dachshunds are really adorable. An animal that lives on the farm and lays eggs. Bok, 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 bok. What am I thinking of? You guys also might make some dishes out of it, like blank nuggets or blank parmesan or I don't know what else. Um, you can grill it, you bake it, you can fry it. KFC is known for it. It's a what? Bok, 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 bok. I think I'm doing that right. Yeah, it is a chicken, which is also another word for a scaredy cat. Growing up, don't be a chicken. I don't know why. What, what's wrong with being a chicken? They lay eggs. They give us food. What is wrong with that? Okay. A place where you wash your dishes. And if you're me, you also eat a lot. What do we call that room that's dedicated to eating and baking and cleaning? Which is not the fun part. The fun part's eating. Let's be real. If you're lucky, yep, yeah, you might have a kitchen. I don't know anybody who doesn't have one. Even people in apartments have kitchens. They're just smaller, but that's okay. You got what you got, right? As long as you use it. Oh, uh, let's see. A vehicle that flies in the sky and has two large wings. That stick out on other side. Poodles. You know what? Mm, I don't know about that because it's not the fur. It's the protein in the saliva. So I don't know. I would have to see. I would have to. Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, I know that part that they're hypoallergenic, but I'm not sure. Just because they say they are, does it really mean you're not going to have a reaction? I don't know. Um, a vehicle that flies in the sky. All right. Miracle on the Hudson. Sully Sullenberger, what did he have to do? He was a pilot, right? So what do pilots do? They have to what? Fly a blank. What do they have at airports besides helicopters? And he had to land one in the middle of the Hudson because they struck a goose and it, go and it blew out the engine, I believe. A poodle? Yeah, oh, Labrador. Oh, I had a Labrador. She was amazing. She was the best. Very, very good, very loyal dog, loved water. So she would jump in her pool randomly and just swim and have the time of her life. Yes, a, a vehicle that flies in the sky and has two large wings that stick out on either side is a plane. All right. Mm, something you put on your toothbrush to brush your teeth. All right, so it's nighttime or it's morning, whichever. I'm gonna pick nighttime because nighttime is my favorite. Uh, it's nighttime, and we're going to bed. You got your pajamas on. You're ready to go to sleep. What do we got to do? We got to brush our teeth with. Start to the T. It's a long word. Not water. If you guys say water, <laughs> then we got some problems. Colgate is one. Um, Oral-B is another. They even make them for children, too. When they're learning to brush your teeth. Same. And it comes in different flavors. Bubble gum. Peppermint. Something burst I think is another one. I don't know. There's so many different flavors. But yes. Oh we are talking about toothpaste. Very necessary. Okay. My favorite. We talked about this before. A food with a crust cheese and toppings that is shaped like a circle 
but cut into triangles. My favorite. It's an Italian dish. Starts with a P, and it's the love of my life. My favorite absolute food. I would eat this five times a day if I could, although I would look like one afterward. But hey, life is short. Might as well enjoy it. Uh, uh, poodles are very smart dogs, too. I think my, my son's great aunt has a Coton de Toulier. And she's a good dog. She's almost like a poodle. She looks like a poodle. But she's very, she's not a poodle. Coton de Toulier is like a French dog, similar to a poodle. But yeah, poodles, I've heard, are very, very, very smart. And you can train them, too, very well, very easily. Okay, a food with crust. Cheese and toppings that is shaped like a circle. My favorite, pizza. But it does come in other shapes and it comes in other varieties, right? You got your Neapolitan, you got Sicilian, you got regular, you got a grandma, you got a white, you got all sorts of stuff. Mac and cheese, yes, pizza is my favorite. And I got a shout out to one of my favorite places, Phil's. Phil's in Massapequa. If you can dream it, they will make it. They make a mozzarella stick pizza, which is just like a regular pizza, except it has mozzarella sticks cut up on top and baked. Um, they have a pretzel crust mac and cheese slice, which is really good. Um, and they also have a drunken Sicilian, which is just basically a vodka grandma slice. And it's delicious. They have just some awesome, awesome pizza. And we're lucky to live on Long Island, where we have a lot of Italians making good pizza. Okay. Uh, ooh, something green that grows on a tree and can change you if there are enough of them. So let's say it's fall, right? It's turning colors. They start coming off the tree. What do we call them? So to the L. You need a whole bunch of them to make up the tree. You can find them on the branch. Yeah, yeah, we are thinking of these, right? Giraffes also eat them, like I said earlier. Giraffes. That would be a cool pet. I think it would have to eat a lot, though. You would probably have to live in a... in a. First of all, it's probably illegal, but you would also have to live in an area where you have tons and tons and tons of trees. Um, okay, so we're not going to be able to get through all of this, so I'm just going to do one or two and see how far we get. Some of these words might be a little hard, so what we're going to do is... I'm going to help you eliminate some answers. So I'm going to say a word and the possible definitions. And we're going to have to try to figure out what this is. So for example, if I said an acorn, what is an acorn? Is it A, the Egyptian word for tea, B, the noise a frog makes when it sneezes, C, a large cob of corn, or D, the fruit of an oak tree, which one would you pick? And we're going to eliminate A and B. So an acorn, is it a large cob of corn or the fruit of an oak tree? It's got to be either C or D. I'll give you guys a second to think about it. Yes, an acorn is D, the fruit of an oak tree. Okay. If I said the word vacate, which would be the correct definition? Is it A, to no longer occupy, B, to move into a new home, C, the common abbreviation for vacation, or D, to use a vacuum cleaner outside. Well, I can tell you that it is not C and D. So does it mean to no longer occupy or does it mean to move into a new home? Give you guys a minute to think. And we'll read out the answer. Yes, it is, right? The I didn't see I didn't know it was a fruit like is it really a fruit does it have seeds inside I want to have to do some research on that like I think do you, if you plant an acorn do you, can you grow it is that how it works 
I guess we'll find out. I don't know. Has anybody ever tried to do that? Just find a random acorn and plant it? Um, yes, vacate means to no longer occupy. Now, if you have the word vacancy, that does mean you can move in. Like, you'll see that with hotels. If you drive by a hotel, it'll say um, vacancy, which means they have spots for you to stay. Got a normal moment. Ha, ha, ha. All right. Oh, uh, let's see. Nimble. Okay. Nimble. Does it mean to be unable to move quickly? Does it mean to be able to move very quickly and easily? Does it mean to be able to move on land only? Or does it mean to be able to move forward only? Well, I can tell you it's not C and D. So nimble. Does it mean to be able to move very quickly or does it mean to be able to move quickly and easily? Now, there's a whole nursery rhyme, right? It has to go, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. Jack, jump over the candlestick and hopefully not get on fire. So, if we say that, then nimble must be B able to move very quickly and easily because if Jack was not nimble, Jack would not be quick. Jack would not jump over the candlestick. He would probably knock it down and cause a fire hazard, right? <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. A polygon. This is a little hard. So I'm going to try to, like, hopefully help you out a bit. A polygon. Is it the official language of the cockatoo? What? No. Is it a figure with multiple straight sides? Is it a figure made up of many triangles? Or is it a unique type of go-kart? So it's not A and B. So we're going to eliminate those two right off the bat. A polygon. Is it made up of many triangles or a unique type of go-kart? Well, I can tell you poly means many. That is the prefix. So if we take that, then it must mean a figure made up of many triangles, which is the correct definition. I know that's a big one. That's probably not really something that you hear that often, right? But this is why it's fun. You get to hear, like exposed to new words and new definitions and new things. And you learn a little something. So that's perfect. Uh, where's my rabbit? Oh, there she is. Hey, Snowy. She's cleaning herself. She's on top of her Christmas present, which is a little um, plywood castle, which they love. So that's good. I'm glad she's using it. Uh, let's see. Stucco. Ooh, stucco. What does that mean? Is it a bee stuck in its own honey? A spy caught in a sticky situation? Is it used for decorating walls or ceilings? Or is it glue imported from England? Well, if you're a bee stuck in your own honey, you are got a problem. So it's not that. And it's not a spy caught in a sticky situation. So is it C or D? So C would be, is it something used for decorating walls or ceilings? Or is it glue imported from England? Well, I could tell you it's not A, B, or D. So that means it's C, used for decorating walls or ceilings. Have you ever heard the term stucco art? That's what that means. Ooh. Okay, a gill. Ooh, a gill. What is a gill? Is it a trail left by a snail? Ugh, no, that sounds like a mess. A vegetable, ideal for eating raw? No. Is it another name for the soles of your shoes? Or is it the organ in which a fish breathes? Let's think. So, fishes live in the water, right? <laughs> Sloppy water. <laughs> uh... Fishes live underwater, and they typically have these things on their neck. They look like little slits almost, and I think it's used, that's how they breathe, right? 
So a gill is indeed an organ in which a fish breathes. It goes like, almost like this, I think. I think. I don't know. I'm not really a expert on fish. I don't eat fish. I don't really like fish. They're slimy and gross. But anyways, that is it for now. We'll do this one and then next, next time we'll finish that. And then we will also do word retrieval with antonyms and synonyms, which is basically an antonym is an, the opposite of the word. So if I say happy, an antonym for happy would be sad because it's the opposite. And then a synonym is another word that means exactly the same thing. So if I said, what is a synonym, synonym for, not cinnamon, I almost said cinnamon. What is a synonym for happy? You might say cheerful, delighted, things like that. So that is what we're going to do next time. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week. And I'll see you next week. And just thank you guys so much for tuning in. And I think I will stick to Pepper with the animals. Because he's just so adorable and so tiny. And he sits in my lap easier. So now he's a little bit bigger. So she likes what she likes and all well, right? Alright, see you next week, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I super, super appreciate it. Stay safe, everybody. Bye.